Well, hello, Envirolution. My name is Professor Hugensplerk, and I am here to tell you a tale from across and beyond the time continuum. There be lessons to be learned from this other realm. Whispers of wisdom, you might say. And you must be listening to hear them. Now, whilst you are listening, you might want to fetch some paper, some pens, colours, paints, whatever else you can find. For with these materials you will be able to create your own time portal, your window to this other world. For this tale I shall tell stretches across the very fabric of time and space, over mountains and underneath rivers. And it all begins with a little girl called Gaia. Now in some ways she is different from everybody else, and she sees things very differently indeed. But then, in other ways, she's just like you and me, and in fact, she could be your great 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 granddaughter. Well, anyway, she has important things to tell us from places that you wouldn't believe. But the thing is, nobody is really listening to her. Her message is getting lost. Lost through the passage of time. So will you dare to hear her tales? Stories of mystery, of danger, and of the time machine. Now perhaps you would like to start drawing Gaia and her little floating robot companion. Now, whilst you assemble your materials and start to think about what these two heroes of our tale might look like, I will activate the mechanisms which will transport us across the realms of human imagination. For right here, right now, at Envirolution Festival in the year 2020, we are going to attempt time travel. So hold on tight, for here we go. Gaia and the Last of the Sagas The darkness stretched out across the fullness of night, so much so that even the stars could not stop it. When suddenly there was a blinding flash of brilliant light, oranges, purples and greens briefly lit up the cold, dark, eerie landscape around, and a portal was torn into the sky. An object of a most peculiar nature was spat out of the portal and landed with a schlop on the cold, mushy ground, making a sway, strange, whirring noise. A hatch slowly opened on the machine that let a slither of light slide onto the murky surroundings. 
Gaia and her little robot could never quite get used to being propelled through time warp by the combination of bone-shakingly fast moving intricate mechanisms and a sprinkle of unknown forces of the universe. It tended to make her a little bit queasy. It looked like they had appeared in a very odd environment indeed. If it wasn't for the bizarre white squishy slush that covered everything around them, they wouldn't be able to see anything at all. It was so incredibly dark. But this odd glowing goop provided the rolling stumps and mounds with an almost furry-like sheen, so they could just about make out they had landed somewhere that was raw, somewhere wild. There was a distant sound of waves crashing against rocks, meaning that the ocean was out there somewhere. Robot popped up its torch beam snorkel to try and shed some light on this cold, dark conundrum. Bam! Chunk a dunk bing! Don't like the look of this place, Gaia! Hmm, strangely enough, I agree, Robot. It's the scariest place we've been yet, whispered Gaia with a slight tremble in her voice. Gaia was only eight years old, quite young for your typical time traveller, and she had a very active imagination. Exploring this was usually her favourite pastime, but not here. Here she could see all sorts of shapes and shadows darting around in Robot's torchlight as it slowly surveyed the scene. It was then she realised just how cold she was. Where are we? she shivered, still afraid to leave the hatchway. And what is that white slodge that covers everything? Robot scooped up some of the mysterious gunk and started its analysis. Jink-a-chunk-a-chunk-a-chunk. This white substance is water particles that have become so cold they turn into this white material. It is called snow. Guy had never seen anything like this before. And finally, gingerly, she took a few steps out to see for herself. This snow scrunched beneath her feet like she was walking on marshmallow. There was nothing like this where she was from. Where in the world could she be? She fumbled through a huge muddle of bright red hair, trying to find the one object that could really shed light on all this. The clock. Gaia kept all of her things in her hair. That way, she knew where they were, sort of. Found it, she said at last. She gave it a spin and peered into the mechanism for answers. Location? Viking Greenland. Year 1409. Time machine status. What the blazes? My circuits are freezing up. I'm not designed for this kind of thing. Also, I think I might be sinking. Duration. 7.5 days until the next time warp. Seven and a half days in this cold, dark misery, exclaimed Robots. Seems so breathed Gaia as she watched the steam from her mouth make whispering shapes in the black. Greenland, eh? It definitely didn't look very green. Whoever named this place clearly didn't know anything about colours. Well, might as well make the best of it then, she said cheerily. Come on, robot, let's go and explore. Blank, bing, bing. Explore? Are you serious? protested robot. We can barely see anything. Robot carried on complaining as they slowly stumbled their way through the darkness, trying to see if they could make out anything, or anyone. What if you fall down a hole, or get eaten by some big hairy snow monster of some sort? Well, I'd be the first to say I told you so. Will you stop your moaning, said Gary at last. Try being helpful and figure out when the sun comes up. Strong, chook, chook, march by the looks of things. That's in five months' time. I said this was a bad idea, replied Robot in its most sulky of tones. Crikey, said Guy, this place is crazy. Why on earth has the time machine brought us here? Surely there can't be anything living here. The bellowing of what sounded like a very angry and possibly quite large beastie suddenly made the snow tremble all around, and Guy thought for a moment that perhaps this was not the best idea after all. 
Now, if you draw on what you think Gaia and the robot look like, perhaps you might want to think about what made that loud roaring noise. And you can have a go at drawing what do you think it might be out there in the darkness. <gasps> Gaia awoke, all in a fluster. Her head was spinning. What had happened? The last thing she remembered was a huge roar in the darkness, and now she was, she was, where, where was she? She was warm and toasty, Guy realized. This was because she found herself under a huge mound of furry blankets, and she was surrounded by an orangey glow. Uh-huh, this was coming from a small fire by the side of her. Gaia was still quite shaken and couldn't make out much, but it looked like she had been brought into some sort of cave. There was certainly no sign of the time machine, or anything that roars. Not yet. Then suddenly, there were blurry shapes approaching, their shadows dancing on the walls with orange flames flickering around them. Gaia was caught flabbergasted. (coughs) Tuk tuk! Well, it's about time. These guys are making my circuit jitter. It was Robot, of course. Gaia sat up and rubbed her eyes. All around her bed was little men and women wearing big furry outfits with big furry hoods and wearing big furry boots on what looked like their big furry feet and holding very long, sharp-looking spears. So next, you might want to draw... What do you think the snow people look like? These folk from the northern skies, with their furry outfits, with furry hoods, with furry boots over their furry feet. And remember, their long, sharp-looking spears. What's happened, Robot? And who are these people? asked Gaia. Kalakisut, ukelu sirisut, ikipot, said one of the men, as if shrugging to the others. Dink, a bink tonk. It seems they are not used to people not being able to speak their language, explained Robots, once it had picked up the right frequency and then could translate. What do they mean by that? puzzled Gaia. There have been many strange folk around here of late, said one of the women. But maybe it's nobody as strange as you two, she added with a tink, 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 as she tapped her spear against Robot. Bang, bang, bing, bong. I'd, I'd, I'd really like to say I don't like this one bit cried Bobot. Oh, chill your boots. They don't look like they want to harm us. In fact, I think they quite like us, said Guy, smiling as she climbed down, swaddled in furry blankets that they had clearly given her to keep her warm. Stood upright, she was about the same size as their new friends. They had wind-worn faces surrounded by jet black hair and very inquisitive eyes. They definitely looked like they were well at home in these northern lands of snow and darkness. So what was that big roar that we heard, and what happened next? Turned out that these people from the north had found Gaia knocked out cold in a mound of snow. They told her that they were sure it was all something to do with the big nasty hairy beast that had come from across the waves. It had to be their fault. They were pure evil. Then there was a collection of murmurs and mutterings, and then one who looked quite old said, We should attack at once! We should drive them out of our lands forever, shouted someone else. A cheer went up in the cave, and everyone there started to gather themselves together, as if getting ready for war. How do we always find ourselves in the middle of all these prickly situations, robot? Guy pondered as they followed along behind. But what choice did they have? The people of the snow hadn't mentioned anything about the time machine, and it's not an easy thing to hide. Perhaps it had been taken by the hairy beast from across those waves, or something else entirely. Either way, they had to find it. It was their only way home. Well, I knew this would happen, came the sound of a voice, like the crinkling of old leaves. A voice which was as old as the hills. Well, you could have told us, said an equally ancient and worldly wise old woman. Now, now, you two, we have to use our powers truly here. 
This turn of events is not intended for this world. The voices came from three ancient women who were gathering around an ancient well, spinning ancient thread under an ancient tree which was woven into the very fabric of the universe itself, the tree of life. These three shrewd mystics were called the Three Norns, and they each had the power to be able to see through the trails of time, and decide the fates of those who travelled through it, whether by natural means or not. One had the power to look into the past, the other into the future, and the third into the present, deciding the fate of those caught in the end of spinning in the yards of time. In the waters of their well they could see the band of snow people struggling through the everlasting darkness, and Gyron robots with them, struggling to keep up. The three old crones braced themselves. Hold on to your walking sticks, ladies. This is going to be a tear like no other. So, perhaps you could draw the three norns by their well, underneath the tree of life. After finally appearing out of the twisting caverns of the cave, Gyre and Robot could just about make out huge tall mountains and cliff tops above them, rising out of the gloom. They trudged over the rugged rocks and icy slopes, battling against the howling winds and treacherous snowdrifts for what seemed like an age. Just as Gyre felt like she was too tired to take another step, one of the group shouted out against the roaring winds. They had spotted something ahead. Peering over the ridge, Gaia could just about make out glowing lights below them, and the occasional flicker of white from crushing waves. Through the whirling winds and blinding snow, she could see a settlement of some sort. A shaky shudder of fear went through her. Who were these evil demons that the folk in the snow spoke of? Did they own the roaring beasties that haunted these dark lands? If so, did they really want to be toodling on down there and saying, Get off our land with nothing but puny spears to poke them with? Well, it was too late to try and reason with them. With a long honk on a walrus horn, they were off. Charging down the snowy hillside like an army of angry gerbils, wailing their war cries. Not for the first time on our adventures through time, Guy felt completely helpless. What could an eight-year-old girl possibly do about all of this? These people must hate each other. Robot could tell what Guy was thinking by now. Bonk, bonk. Don't you dare, Guy. You can't go sticking your nose into all these kerfuffles. According to my databanks, this fight has been going on for years. And there's nothing you can do about these kinds of things. You're only one person, you know. Gaia had heard all this before from her grumpy metal companion, and it usually made her stick her nose into kerfuffles. Maybe she could get on down there and stop all this foolishness, Guy thought. Surely they could see how silly they were being. Wouldn't it all be a lot better for everyone if they worked together in this hard land of darkness and fear? Gaia was just working herself up to heading on down there and giving them a piece of her mind, when there was a sudden flash of brilliant light beside her. At it again, are they? Came a voice that sounded like he had seen a few too many battles for one eternity. Gaia couldn't move, let alone speak. She and Robot froze where they were. Oh, sorry, I suppose you're wondering who I am, said the humongous giant who towered above them both. He spotted a huge long blonde moustache that reached down past his armor and furry waistcoat, past his collection of sharp and gruesome-looking assorted weaponry, right down to his colossal boots. My name is Forseti, the Viking God of Justice, he said, rolling his old, all-seeing eyes, as if the very words of his own name had become a bit of a bore. 
So perhaps here, on your time portal, you could draw the Viking God of Justice, Forseti. Somewhere inside the sheer terror of what had just happened in the last few moments, the thought, God of Justice, squeezed through Gaia's mind. Um, can't you please do something about all this then, Mr. God of Justice, sir? Gaia asked, as politely as she could. Not until they reach Valhalla, boomed the god with an unexpected burst of pride. Gaia looked at Robot with glazed empty eyes. She was a bit out of her depth here. Jink! Weep, weep! Valhalla is the Viking world of Asgard. It is the grand halls of the afterlife, where Viking warriors go after they fall in battle. If they are true Vikings, added Forseti, only Odin can decide. Gaia looked again at Robot, completely lost. Bonk! Ding, ding! Odin is the most powerful leader of all gods, if you believe that sort of thing. Well, I'm fairly convinced so far, Gaia said, as she watched alongside Forseti at the carnage going on down the hill. Next on your time portals, you could draw the Vikings as they go into battle against the people of the northern skies, those little fairy folk with those sharp spears. The sky had erupted into fierce, dark reds, and the evil laughing and booming of war could be heard echoing around the coastline. Oh, that's tear up there, having a laugh as usual, Forseti groaned. Bravest of all the gods, eh? Pah! He even got a day named after him, Captain Bloomin' Tuesday. Don't see why he's so special. Are those angels? asked Gaia, watching white flashes swoop around majestically to dance in the angry skies. Oh, Valkyries they are, answered Forseti, flapping about, deciding who will have the honour of being killed horribly and who will survive. It's usually a bit random in my experience. It didn't look very random to Gaia. It seemed like they were being kept very busy swooping down and collecting the big men one after the other, taking them to see Val what was her name and go and hang out with Captain Tuesday. It was all very odd, but Guy was intrigued by these Viking folk all the same. They worshipped very strange gods who, by the looks of Forseti, seemed like they had been around for ages. It appeared these old gods had definitely got a bit fed up with this group of Vikings in particular, as the battle seemed to be going very badly for them. The big, hairy, battle-hardy warriors were just, well, too big. They were swinging their battle axes and war hammers around their heads and completely missing the smaller folk from the north, not hitting anything, really. With their gruesome pointy spears, the people of the snow definitely had the upper hand. Gaia shuddered at the thought of what was going on down there. Oh, I don't think I can watch this, she trembled. But just as she was turning away, something glinted in the dim light. A band of these Vikings have come out of one of the large buildings in the settlement and were headed for the shore. But they had something with them, something that didn't belong, something that shone strangely in the light. That's Oracle! It was the time machine. They had started loading the giant machine into one of their boats in the bay, hurrying to try and escape the raging battle that was going on behind them. We've got to go after him, robot. Like, now! Bing! Which who got what? Robot was still bumbling and dithering and protesting when Gaia had made it halfway down the hill. It was then that she noticed there were lots of Vikings getting into boats now. They were fleeing the battle, abandoning all their little houses and quite big churches and leaving it all behind. The people from the north were dancing about, all heartily celebrating their victory as Gaia hurried on towards the shore with Robot lagging far behind. The time machine had been loaded onto the boat by now, 
and they were pushing off from the shore and heading out into the darkness beyond. Would you like to draw the time machine on your time portal next? She had to get on to one of the boats and follow this boat to big hairy vikings, no matter what danger lay ahead. If she didn't get back to the time machine before the clock ran down, then it would enter time warp without her. She would be stranded in this cold, dark place, which seemed to be totes fine for the people of the snow, who were still cheering away, looking very happy about things. But not for Gaia. She just didn't think she would be able to handle this cold for very much longer. It definitely wasn't what she was used to. And anyway, she had to get it back. Just as she reached the shore, the very last boat was pulling away, and quick as a flash, Guy hopped on to a nearby rock and grabbed hold of a dangling rope and scrambled aboard just in time. The huge Vikings were far too busy getting out the oars and struggling to raise the sail in the blustering winds to even notice. Robot finally caught up and floated down next to Guy as she pulled the basket over the both of them. Go on, go on. I don't like our chances here at all, Gaia, complained Robot, as they watched, as the waves started to get bigger, and bigger, and bigger, as the last fleet of Viking ships left Greenland behind forever, sailing out into the dark, stormy seas. Now who knows what a Viking ship looks like? Perhaps on your time portal next you would like to draw the Viking fleet sailing out into the blackness. The wind surged and roared all around the little fleet of ships as they bounced along the tumbling, writhing, serpent-like waves. Thunder boomed and lightning bolts struck with the fury of a tremendous hammer, sending the Vikings into chaos aboard the boat that Gaia had hidden aboard. The crew were shouting and bawling all sorts at each other now, although Robot could translate what they were saying, which was always handy. Above the crashing waves around them, only a few words could be made out here and there. Some of them were very angry about what had happened to their homes, cursing those scrailing natives who had attacked them. One talked about how they had surely angered their old gods by abandoning them, and that's why this had all happened. Another was shouting about their cowardly leaders, who only cared about gathering silver and guarding their hordes. They had surely brought this doom down upon them. Gaia didn't care about any of that right now. She only hoped that the little boat would hold together and the storm would calm down before they were truly lost to the seas. It didn't look very likely. The red haze in the sky seemed to have followed the band of Vikings and was looking more and more angry. Dragon! The shout came from every Viking there, on every boat, as they pointed out towards the furious red eye of the storm as a crash of thunder struck again. Well, what a predicament. Would you like to draw the dragon which has now appeared with the fury of the gods behind it? It's huge, it's red, it's angry, and it's had big scales and even bigger wings and breathes huge plumes of fire. The huge winged beast swooped out of the clouds and fired wrath across the fleet, splintering boats into pieces. The boat Gaia was aboard got lucky this time. The Vikings aboard Gaia's boat were shouting all kinds of garbled craziness now, fighting about Ragnar's rocks or something, as the dragon continued to obliterate their fleet with its rage. The rigging came loose and sails tore to shreds as the arguments continued. One of the crew named the dragon Eric the Red back for revenge. Gaia hung on tight closing her eyes and hoping for the best as another ship was blown to bits in fiery flames just next to them. It was then that she heard the alarm. It was going off in her head. No, wait, in her hair? It was the clock. It was Oracle. 
The time machine was trying to talk to her. She fumbled about in her tangled red mop and finally pulled out the clock and popped it open. Location, deep ocean off the west coast of Greenland. Year 1409. Time machine status. Well, I'm not happy about all of this. Combination of fire and salt water interfering with time circuits going into overload. I am powering up for immediate emergency warp. Duration, currently 23 hours until the next time warp. But the clock timer was accelerating towards zero rapidly. Oh no! screamed Gaia. There's got to be a way out of this somehow, surely? Right, robot? Bang, bonk, bonk. I already abandoned all hope quite some time ago, I'm afraid, Gaia. But we have to try, she squealed. It was then that she noticed those faces. Gaia, in her astonishment, had flung away the basket that was hiding her and Robot and was stood out on the deck for all to see. From here, she had a good view out across what was left of the battered fleet that were all being tossed around like socks in a washing machine. Oracle, her time machine, was on the biggest of all the boats, with a crew of huge, hairy monsters of men, with so many trinkets and jewels all over them that Gaia could quite easily make out those ridiculous, twinkling, beardy beacons, even from this distance. There wasn't much time, and things were looking increasingly desperate. Gaia started to panic. She had to get over there somehow. But how? Everyone on the boat had first jumped back at the appearance of Gaia and the strange robot, but they had picked up their weapons now and slowly started to edge towards her. Gaia felt the hairs on the back of her neck prickle and fear overcame her once more. She suddenly felt like a very small fish in a very large pond. And just as the crew closed in with their weapons raised, the angry clouds erupted into flame behind them in the shape of the dragon's eyes. The huge red devil hovered above the boat, staring directly at Gaia for a heartbeat or two that seemed like it was ours. Its gaze seemed to reach into Gaia's very soul. Me <laughs> There was a cackle around the well. The ancient and wizened women, the three Norns, were collected around the tree of life. They were all now trying to untangle the thick red thread that had twisted itself through time. Well, this little girl is getting up to all sorts of mischief, said one of the mystics. Aha, there we have it said another as she managed to undo a most troublesome knot. It is time, said the third, as a malevolent darkness suddenly enveloped them all. Above the maelstrom of boats, wreckage and fiery ocean waves, the dragon threw back its head and roared to the heavens. Then at once it swooped down and devoured Gaia's boat, along with many boats of the Viking fleet, including the clan chiefs and the time machine. Yum, 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 yum. I bet you weren't expecting that, were you? In an instant the world around Gaia was turned to terror and flame. The dragon, seemingly satisfied, then turned to make for the northern horizon as the surviving ships were blown off towards a distant line of land to the west. After a time, the air at once seemed to clear, and the waves began to subside as a couple of rays of sunshine even began to tickle the edge of the sea. The remaining ramshackled crew started to gather in their tattered sails, and took up their oars once more to go and explore this new-found land. The skies turned silent, and the air eerily still. And that is the end of this tale. No, it's not, of course it isn't. No, it's not the end. It's, it's totally, everything's still going to be totally fine. And what is this I see before me? Boom, the voice that suddenly shook Gaia back into existence. 
Who do I find on the steps of Valhalla? It seemed like she had entered a sort of dream world, as she tried to blink through the blur. She made out huge tall pillars that shone majestically in the light, towering up from the old stone floor that she found herself upon. Around her was a scattered mess of wreckage and people who looked equally bewildered. Bellowing over them all stood a giant of gruesome yet godly majesty. He had one eye open and scars over the other, with two ravens, one perched on each shoulder. At his side were two huge and ferocious-looking wolves that were greedily watching the crowd. Behind him was another huge god with a huge blonde moustache. It was Forseti, the Viking god of justice. Everyone dropped to their knees and begged for mercy from the one they all now prayed to, the one they named Odin. Now next on your time portals, perhaps you would like to draw Odin and his ravens or his wolves or all of these things. Maybe you could draw what you think Valhalla looks like. So this was he that Forseti had talked about. Odin, the great leader of all the Viking gods. The big chiefs of the Viking clan in all their fine jewellery and many glittering trinkets gingerly wobbled forward. The weight of their silver-clad helmets were creasing up their own faces. They made offerings of their many goodies to this king of all gods, keeping their heads bowed low and muttering words of forgiveness. This made the great Odin toss his head back as he let out a mighty belly-shaking laugh that shook the very pillars that surrounded them. <laughs> Never before have I seen a more cowardly rabble of feeble men. And you think this will get you into the halls of Valhalla? You are not fit to drink with these other fine warriors. Instead, you must sweep up the mess each morning, clear out the slop buckets, and prepare the hall ready for the next evening of feasting and celebration. The Viking chiefs looked dumbstruck, as their prowess and aplomb were torn from them in an instant. With one growl from the wolves, they were quickly ushered away by Forseti, who gave Gaia a wink as he left. And so what to do with you, little one? said Odin as he turned to Gaia. He stood at her as if reaching into her very mind, seeing everything she had seen through and through. You certainly do not belong up here in Asgard, especially with these contraptions you bring with you. Gaia spun round to see Robot blinking its many eyes trying to reboot under a pile of wood and half a shredded sail. And behind was Oracle, still somehow in one piece, though looking fairly scorched here and there. I can see that your heart is true, continued Odin, and that there may be good you can do back in the world we call Midgard. Um, please, great and wise Odin, is... Is there anything you can do to help? For it seemed to Gaia like these particular Vikings were so obsessed with little shiny things that maybe that's why they found it so hard to make friends. She didn't really know what to do about people like that. I must prepare for the coming of Ragnarok, the end of the world. It is you people down on Midgard who must decide your own fate, and when this end will come. But I'm only one little girl, stuttered Gaia. What can I do? You must do what you can with the time that you have, whilst always remembering what is of real value. For it is said that after Ragnarok, the day of doom, the twilight of the gods, the earth will rise up again, 
ever green from the ocean. Then those gods and people who have survived will live on in the land of their ancestors. Look to this wild earth for answers, replied Odin. And now leave this place. There are preparations to make. Gaia turned to the time machine and robot, who was still glitching and twitching as he bumbled its way out of the wreckage. They entered the time machine as Odin's two wolves nuzzled it with their noses, rolling it out of Asgard, the home of the Viking gods, away from Valhalla. Gaia stared out the window as they started to slide down a gigantic rainbow bridge back down to Earth. As they left, there was a peculiar whisper on the wind. It sounded like old ladies laughing. But perhaps Gaia had imagined that. It had been quite a rough ride so far in this bizarre adventure in the darkness and carnage of 1409. As they returned back to their own world, the time machine started to power up. The clock had frozen on one single second when they had been consumed by the great jaguar in the sky. As Oracle started to create the time vortex that would catapult them into the next continuum, Gaia tried to untangle the mess of what had just happened. It was so strange how silly people could be in those days, obsessed about collecting more shiny things, making money or getting more stuff not caring at all if it meant fighting with others to do so. But then, actually, has it really been any different since? Or could it be? Perhaps that was what Odin had meant all along. Now, that is the end of this particular tale. But before I leave you, I would like you to look over your time portal and all of the different things that you have drawn and learnt from this tale. Take that with you onwards in your journey and never forget the tales of Gaia and her robot and the time machine.